Now to Dave Hall, special guest joining us now and also taking your calls, a very dear friend of Travis Alexander. Dave knows Jody Arias. He knew Travis Alexander very, very well. Dave Hall, thanks for being with us. I want to hear your take on Nurmi painting Arias as the victim. And we just heard it again from attorney Jason Lamb. Well, of course, she's not going to take accountability or responsibility for anything that she's done. And that's his job to paint her as the victim. The problem is none of the evidence matches up with her ever being the victim. She was never abused. Every friend that ever hang around, hang around them saw Travis always treated her like a lady. He never, ever laid a hand on anybody. And we've got lots of former girlfriends of Travis to testify to say, hey, listen, Travis never abused women in any way, shape, or form. So just add this to the laundry list of lies that Jody Arias tells. You know what was interesting, Dave Hall, as I was sitting there in the courtroom, there was a break, and the jury left. Everybody in the courtroom stood up. Arias remained where she was. And she turned back to the gallery where we're all sitting, and she locked eyes with a young man sitting on the front row on her side of the courtroom. You know, it's like a wedding, the groom's side and the bride side. I was actually sitting on Arius' side, and um, I noticed her look at him, and they were both doing stretches, turning back and forth like that in their places and smiling at each other. And then she looked back a little bit, and I was standing there looking right at her. Her smile immediately vanished. She turned around and sat down and never turned around again. You knew Arius very well as well through Travis. What were your observations of her? You know, we always encouraged Travis uh, to cut that relationship off. Even though we didn't know anything particular was happening, we always told Travis that he could do a lot better. There was always an evil vibe about her when she was around we just never trusted her intuitions. We knew that when his tires were being splashed, that she was behind that, that she was always snooping into his, his private social media sites and emails. She was just, she's not, you know, mentally challenged or anything. I think that's an insult to everybody out there that has some type of, you know, PTSD or something like that. This woman is just plain evil. Let's stop trying to diagnose it and make it a disease. She's evil. You know, uh, with me, everyone, and take your calls, Dave Hall, and I'm going to go out to the calls in just a minute, but I've got a question. And You know, uh, as a trial lawyer, we learn early on, Dave, never ask the question you don't know the answer to, but I'm going to do that right now. I want to know what you think the appropriate sentence is, and then I want to know what you think Travis in life would have believed would be the appropriate sentence. Well, I believe that the appropriate sentence is the death penalty, and for if no other reason, even if it takes 20 years of appeals before it's overturned, there's a huge difference between the way somebody is treated that's sitting on death row where they're in lockdown 23 hours a day, no family, no friends, no visitors, no privileges, as opposed to somebody that's in general population, that they're getting college degrees, they're starting clubs, they're doing all kinds of artsy projects with their friends. Jody loves the celebrity status in prison. I want her, if she is in prison for the rest of her life, I want her locked down 23 hours a day. And I honestly believe that Travis would want the same thing because she robbed Travis of the ability to have a wife, a family, and to be there for his friends and to experience the joys that we have in life today. She stole that from Travis, and she doesn't deserve another happy day on this earth.